Welcome back. It's up 11,000 on the index. But we at ET now are choosing to even celebrate Raksha Bandhan in these COVID times in our special segment. So we talk about um, how D Raksha Bandhan has gone digital in these COVID times and, you know, how we are seeing a massive drop, of course, in the sale of Rakhis. But there are some very interesting duos of brothers and sisters that we will be discussing and delving into in this special segment. But before that, this, of course, is the festival that celebrates the relationship between the brother and sister, which essentially means bond, protection, or even care. But this year is, of course, like no other in history. We've got the anti-China sentiments, the COVID-induced restrictions, and this means, of course, digital celebrations. All of this have also had a profound impact on the festival of Raksha Bandhan. Take a look. <laughs> Raksha Bandhan, the festival that celebrates the bond between a brother and sister, gets an Atmanirbhar makeover this year. Every year, Rakhis were imported from China and the market flourished because of cheaper costs and varieties. But with the anti-China sentiment gaining ground, local traders are now manufacturing Rakhis, making it an example of Atmanirbhar India. इस साल राखी का बहुत काफी परेशानी चल रही है भाई बहन का तो प्यार हमेशा के लिए चलते रहता है और दूसरी बात क्या है कोरोना के वजह से बहुत काफी मार्केटों में और सारे परिवार में सारे हिंदुस्तान में ये चाइना में जो करना जो आ गया है उसके लिए राखी का बंधन बहुत कम हो रहा है दिन पे दिन दिन पे दिन 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 पे दिन राखी का बंधन बहुत प्यार हो रहा है और मार्केट में भी राखी बहुत शार्टेज हो गई है राखी भी दुनिया की महंगी है the confederation of all india traders called for a boycott of all chinese products during raksha bandhan according to the traders body the boycott has seen a slump of more than 4000 crore rupees for chinese traders however there has been a massive drop in the sale of rakhis due to the covid-19 pandemic traders say the reason for this drop is due to consumer sentiment and due to the migrant exodus that has displaced many people traders who usually make a business of rupees 40 lakh to the sale of products during raksha bandhan have seen a drop in sale by up to 85 percent in 2020. my brother lives in kolkata and uh, usually during raki he comes down to hyderabad to get his raki tied but this time uh, it's a little too risky for him to come down and even the flights are closed now so I will be sending him the Rakhi digitally and I'm hoping to get my uh, present digitally as well. While many have decided not to celebrate the festival in person to comply with social distancing, online orders and Rakhi mailboxes have surged amidst the pandemic. Various online services are being used to mail Rakhis or even tie a Rakhi digitally. This has given a shot in the arm for e-commerce. Flipkart, for example, said it is selling 1 lakh units of Rakhis per day. The platform has seen double the number of growth in comparison to units sold in the previous year. Digital celebrations could be the new trend. People are avoiding outdoor shopping and preferring Zoom and WhatsApp video calls over physical get-togethers and have even decided to get decked up for online meets. Karishma Asudani, ET Now, New Delhi. Well, one can safely say there's a COVID impact on just about everything. Who would have thought, Ra thought Raksha Bandhan will also have some impact uh, with regards to COVID. But uh, today we're celebrating brothers and sisters and we thought of uh, picking up such unique brother-sister duos and chatting with them. We've often talked about, it's a well-established fact that in the last three months, retail participation has actually picked up. So we thought, uh, why not feature Nikhil as well as Pranali Devadkar today? Uh, both of them are a very unique brother-sister combination in that sense. Pranani has nothing to do with equity markets, but Nikhil has managed to convince her, mentor her, and get her to actually start investing. Both of you, welcome to ET Now. Thank you so much for taking the time out and joining in. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks, and we okay. should... So, Pranali, first of all, morning. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Pranali, first of all, begin by telling our viewers and um, 
everyone watching the show right now, what is it that you do? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, good morning, everybody. So um, I'm an artist and a production designer on feature films. So basically, I paint and uh, design film sets. Wow. So that must have come to a stall right now because of COVID. Absolutely. We haven't had uh, film shoots for the past four months now. And uh, work has slowly started trickling in, but it's um, nothing like what it was before. So we're all waiting. Hmm. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, Nikhil, I believe you are a full-time investor, stocks and only stocks. Uh, Aisha, firstly, let me wish all the viewers a very happy Raksha Bandhan. And yes, in the last four months of this lockdown period, I have been a full-time investor, you can say, because that's these are the four months that gave me uh, time to pursue my passion uh, of investing in the stock markets as a full-time. Okay. But how long have you been investing? While last four months, I'm sure you've got concentrated time to only focus on your portfolio. But what's been your investing journey like? I started in the year 1990 when my father advised me to invest in the public issue of the first public issue of HDFC share. And at that time, I got 20 shares at, of the face value of 100 at a premium of just 95. Now, since then, the journey has been long. The same very stock, 20 shares of stock, have grown into 2,000 by way of you know face value split and bonus shares. And the price has gone up 900 times. Uh, the investment has grown 900 times since what I invested in that lot in 1990. Since then, I've been investing in uh, the mutual funds, the primary markets, the secondary markets. That's the journey so far. Pranali, sure. Pranali, you've been far removed from all of it. How is it that you got convinced to start investing? Well, I've been watching uh, Nikhil all along. So it's not new to me in that sense, but I had to actually start uh, with opening an online bank account for that matter. So I had nothing to do with shares. I've only been listening to Nikhil, but uh, didn't implement or didn't do anything about it. So, uh, well, this these three lockdown uh, months have been, uh, you could say, the start of my journey where I realized and I decided, you know, why not? Let me try as well. So quite literally, I had to start with opening an online account. Hmm. So what prompted you, Pranali? Is it because three months you had time on your hand? Or is it because also somewhere that fear that nothing's happening in the movies, I don't know when I'm going to get back, so might as well be a little wise and deploy the spare cash that I have. And who knows, maybe it could multiply, maybe it could even triple from here. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. I mean, um, we had the first month of lockdown, no work, no income. Then it went to the second month, third month. And that was, uh, you know, that just got me thinking that, uh, you know, what should I do? And I've been, Nikhil's been investing. I've been listening to him. So just decided this is something where I can probably, you know, try and make some income. Um, and it's something new to me. I can learn something. I had all the time. So just decided to um, try it out. Um, an adventure, you could say. But um, I'm learning. And uh, I think um, I'm, invol um, I'm uh, evolving. Sure. Nikhil, I, must, uh, I mean, I'm sure there must be that added pressure because... Uh, you're literally Pranali's fund manager right now. What was your piece of advice when she was actually beginning to start investing and when she came to you saying, you know, here's my money, tell me what to do with it? Yeah, actually, I made Pranali aware of all the risks that are involved in the stock market. And uh, 
you know, if you are investing in uh, good stocks for a long term, then the returns are definitely from experience, I can say that they are more than the bank FD returns. So Pranali had some spare funds. Uh, whether she wanted to know whether to invest in bank FDs or, you know, take risks and she was prepared to take those risks. So it didn't require much convincing and uh, there was no added pressure at all. In fact, you know, Aisha, Pranali has been a lucky mascot for me. So what I do is whenever I have to invest in any share, I ask Pranali also to invest in those shares. And that has worked for both of us. Well, yeah, and I just follow him. Totally go by his advice. That, that's a great insight that you're giving us, Pranali being the lucky mascot for you. So Pranali, I believe first stock that you ever bought was Madhusan Sumi. Did you know anything about it or were you just blindly following whatever Nikhil told you? <laughs> Buy this and you bought it. Well, to be very honest, yes, Madhusan Sumi was the first stock that I bought. And to be very honest, I had no idea what it was all about. So I just followed his advice and I invested in it. But then after I did, I, I, I did read up a little bit more about the company. And uh, I still don't regularly keep a track about what's going on. But uh, you can say I'm more aware now. So I, I know a bit more than before. Yes. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, like you said, that it's not just about doubling your money or investing your money, but it's also about learning something new. And stock markets really are a diverse universe. You get to know just so many things which are connected to markets and economy and, you know, world politics and just about every other thing linked to it. But Nikhil, I see that you've applied the Warren Buffett mantra to investing. You got greedy when others were fearful. Uh, end February, beginning March is when you started just about doubling uh, each of your investments. Give, a li give us a little bit color of about, you know, what is it that you've bought in the last three months? Okay, Aisha, you know, history has shown that whenever there has a, been a market crash, uh, after the crash, the market has recovered very rapidly. And uh, these crashes are not very common features. You know, they happen very rarely and that's the time the market gives you an opportunity to enter. So this was a good opportunity, I thought. And uh, well, uh, since then I have been focusing on investing in uh, the, the top companies in each sector, uh, whichever I have missed earlier. So, yes, Madhursan Sumi was one of them, with being a leader in uh, the auto ancillary sector. And there has been, I have been adding on to my HDFC uh, banks and I have been adding on, I bought Asian paints in the FMCG and I have bought uh, HDFC Life in the insurance sector and various others. Hmm. I see some very interesting names as well, Nikhil. You've got a Westlife, you've got a Tata consumer that you've bought into. What gives you this kind of conviction in these contra bets right now? And I guess, you know, that's what one can call them as of now. Uh, Westlife leads uh, is involved. I mean, they own the brand uh, McDonald's, which is one of the most popular brands. I noticed that, uh, you know, this share was, this stock was quoting around 400s in the month of January. And then before the pandemic broke out and before the lockdown started, and then went on going down and down. And sometime in uh, May or June, when it was around 296, I thought it would be the right time to buy this. Because given the brand McDonald, I'm sure once normalcy restores, uh, this this is going to pick up and it's going to be where it was before the pandemic. So uh, I bought it purely from long-term point of view. As far as Tata consumer is concerned, I never had any shares in FMCG sector. So again, monitoring the stock market since the last financial year or since, since 1st of April of this year, uh, out of all the FMCG stocks that I have been monitoring, I noticed that there were three companies which were rising fast and uh, rose almost 40% between April and uh, July. So one of them was Tata Consumer. Uh, 
that's the reason i bought tata consumer sure that makes sense prarali i think you are the best person to really ask this uh, but given that the last 3 months film production has come to a standstill do you really think it's going to be that easy to get back uh, say in a month or so back to movie production and would it really be the same as it was pre covid because you know now you're going to have just so many social uh, distancing and other norms that are going to be put into place uh no I think um, we're all aware that uh, it's not going to be the same. We won't be returning to the same world again, um, and it's the same thing with us, the film industry. Uh, we're just going to be ending up going to film sets with lesser crew, more contained. Uh, all the thousands of uh, crew on and off camera have been wanting to go back to work, but eventually, it's just going to be the essential crew on set. I mean one one thing is sure until production companies can secure uh, insurances for their movies and TV shows uh, they simply won't be able to uh, ramp up the production again and um, as a production designer as an HOD everyone has to take uh, individual responsibilities to ensure the security and the health of the of their team so it will have to be a tight team obviously you know sanitizing processes before during and after the shoots which is going to be uh, taking a lot of um, you know time and cost uh, implication it's not going to be easy at all so i don't see film shoots on that scale are going to start uh, very soon uh, slowly small ones perhaps but not the big ones no not until 2021 i would say and how long before pranali people get back to movie theaters back home i'm wondering whether you'll be a contra buyer and buy the stock of pvr or rhinox leisure anytime soon hoping that some day people will get back to watching movies in theaters well i don't think people are going to get back to uh, watching <laughs> movies in the theaters till 2021 i think uh, there will be some enthusiastic lot i'm sure who would go to the cinemas but by and large people are going to be uh, not very open to going to cinemas and they're already getting used to sitting at home and watching uh, netflix and amazon from their comforts of their home so uh, why why step out and uh, pay and take that risk so tv is going to be the new platform the content on tv is going to just increase uh, more and more there are going to be more options and uh, um, as far as uh, buying pvr or stocks i don't see personally i'd still take nikhil's advice but um, i don't see why one should buy those stocks when there would be uh, others available which uh, probably would be better at this point certainly at this this period of time covid times I see Nikhil is nodding his head uh, he's feeling the proud brother because Pranali is already sounding very wise and investor Nikhil <laughs> wouldn't you agree Yeah sure sure Well I, like I said I'm evolving learning <laughs> you you are very fast okay who knows maybe tomorrow nikhil would be asking pranali for some stock advice but great to have both of you on the show today thanks so much for taking the time out thank, thank you thank you very much aisha happy raksha bandhan to everybody happy raksha bandhan